Hello, and welcome to Pathfinder B-Sides. I am your host, Professor Phoenix, and today we're going to be talking about the vivisectionist archetype for the alchemist class. As a pretty often requested archetype and one of the most popular by far, I feel it's time to set the record straight. So let's dive in by starting with the flavor text. A vivisectionist studies bodies to better understand their function. Unlike a chirugian, chi chirugian, chirugian. Uh, a vivisectionist goals are not related to healing, but rather to experimentation and knowledge that most people would consider evil. Yada yada yada, evil badass alchemist that doesn't follow the rules. Really though. And what I want you to see is that this archetype isn't just a rogue that can drink a few drinks and get all stabby make meat chopper. No, this archetype has real potential to get creative. So uh, let's dive a bit deeper, shall we? A vivisectionist has the following class features. Sneak attack. At first level, a vivisectionist gains the sneak attack ability as a rogue of the same level. If a character already has sneak attack from another class, the levels from the classes that grant sneak attack stack to determine the effective rogue level for the sneak attack's extra damage dice. So an alchemist 1 rogue 1 has a 1d6 sneak attack, like a second level rogue. And an alchemist 2 rogue 1 has 2d6 sneak attack, like a third level rogue, and so on. This replaces bomb. Hot tamales in a Pringle can! What was that? You get sneak attack that stacks with effective rogue level? Swedes. You lose access to bombs? Bomber, man. You lose the best part of the alchemist class and gain the best part of the rogue class. But wait, there's more. Torturer's Eye. A second level. At second level, a vivisectionist adds Death Watch to his formula book as a first level extract. Ah, Death Watch. Basically lets you see the health bars of anyone you see within 30 feet of you. That would be super useful to end enemies quickly, or to know when to move on to the next enemy. Seems pretty solid to me. At third level, you get Cruel Anatomist. Uh, at third level, a vivisectionist may use his Knowledge Nature skill bonus in place of his Heal skill bonus. Weird, but okay. Saves you skill points and let you use your killer intelligence elsewhere, I guess. Um, and then at 7th level, you get Torturous Transformation. At 7th level, a vivisectionist adds Anthropomorphic Animal to his formula book as a 2nd level extract. When he uses this extract, he injects it into an animal as part of a 2-hour surgical procedure. By using multiple doses of this extract as part of the surgery, he multiplies the duration by a number of extracts used. So, here's another weird direction you could go. Anthropomorphic animal lasts an hour per level and is multiplied by how many times you use the extract on a creature during the surgery. So at level 7, if you use two doses it would last 14 hours. At level 8, three doses would get you a full 24 hours. So, what would you do with your new friend? That's up to you, and keep in mind, you would still need to talk your new friend into helping you. Eventually, you can make this permanent as well, so, hey, bonus! At ninth level, a vivisectionist adds Awaken and Baleful Polymorph to his formula book as third level extracts. When he uses the Awaken or Baleful Polymorph extract, he injects it into the target, not a plant, as part of a 24-hour surgical procedure. He can make anthropomorphic animal permanent on a creature by spending 7,500 gold. Oh snap, son! Apparently it's time to make your friend smart and stay humanoid forever! And at 15th level, a vivisectionist adds regenerate to his formula book as a 5th level extract. So now you can cut off a limb and grow it back. Sweet! Great for when running from the town guard. Because, you know, you, you cut off your arm after you turn a corner. And they're not looking for one armed man, so there you go. Let's see, so next up, uh, you can also take Bleeding Attack. Uh, you can select the Bleeding Attack Rogue talent in place of a Discovery. And now you can cause an extra point of bleed for each round per sneak attack die used. It bypasses DR, but doesn't stack with itself. Pretty good for when you know an enemy is close to death. 
Crippling Strike. At 10th level or later, a vivisectionist may select the Crippling Strike Rogue Talent in place of a Discovery. So minus 2 strength damage and it should stack with itself. Sweet. And then finally we got a whole bunch of different discoveries that, you know, complement the vivisectionist archetype. Which is the alchemical simulacrum, you know, make a ice clone for a couple of hours. Um, concentrate poison, which lets you, you know, up the dosage. Uh, doppelganger sim simulacrum, which is even stronger and lasts longer than the alchemical simulacrum. Uh, feral mutagen, which, you know, gets you pretty beast mode. Uh, parasitic twin. Makes another one of you that kind of like hangs off your side. Uh, preserve organs. Makes you almost immune to sneak attacks. Tentacle because, hey, you cut off an arm, pop out a ten tentacle. Yeah. Uh, you get. You can also pick out a tumor familiar if, just in case you always wanted that second really close friend to, you know, just chill out on your neck. Um, vestigial arm. You know, for an extra arm that doesn't really do much but just chills and... Maybe you can have it hold on to a, a special blade. And then, you know, of course the wings, which gives you the ability to fly, you know, one minute per level per day, but still it's pretty awesome. So let's talk about what I think of this archetype. I'm actually not really fond of it. Uh, I feel like this would have been great for the rogue itself and just kept in that family and maybe instead of... Uh, Instead of rogue talents, it would take the place of those rogue talents. Anthropomorphic animal is pretty cool, but also, like, the best place to use it would be if you were actually, like, creating a temple to yourself that's way underground, and the the people that you're bringing down there to, you know, to, to mess around with, they're your guinea pigs. And you could turn guinea pigs into little people, and then they can run around and do your bidding. Like... It's really good for NPCs and for bad guys, and it gives a bad guy a little bit more staying power, but as a PC, I don't think I would have that much fun with it. Now, maybe if there was a druid or a ranger in the party and they had an animal companion, and sometimes it's easier to walk around town with your horse being more humanoid. Yeah. I mean, it lasts for hours per level, so you could easily walk around town and just have everyone look at the freak of nature like that's cool um so i'm going to go ahead and give this one a rating uh for role playability uh, i'd give it eight out of ten like you could probably put your own spin on it but i can't really think of how you would do that and then for game playability like if you're actually rolling dice to attack and stuff uh i feel like the bombs is a big loss i love the bombs Bombs are so versatile and fun, and by the time you hit 8th level, you'll have had four different types of bombs. Um, I, I, I don't think it would be that much fun to play. So, for on the table and rolling dice and combat, I would also give it like maybe a 6 out of 10. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I can see where it would be a good archetype to use. It's just not my stilo. So I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. It could be a better archetype, but it's not the worst. So thanks for hearing me rant about an archetype today. Uh, let's see. So in the future, I'm planning on working on putting out a couple of videos um, that are not archetype videos. They're going to be based on the consolidated skills rule set. And also I'm working on one of the stranger classes like doing an explanation of what it does uh yeah so thanks keep listening uh keep enjoying it and if you want to argue with me about how awesome this archetype should be and i'm just obviously missing the point let me know down in the comments join the discord maybe share this video with a friend or a gm that has no idea what a vivisectionist archetype is also, if you know how to say that word, chirurgian, chi chirurgian, that'd be cool. Let me know. You guys take it easy. Keep gaming. I don't have a catch line or a catchphrase to play me out of the video. So I'm just going to sing and sing 
until you guys just click off. Don't forget the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm just going to thank you for watching the video.